Hi, welcome to my first tutorial. Sorry if I mess it up. I'm a little nervous. It's my first time I've done this retake three times. So basically, yeah, this me and my daughter do our nails. It's a tribute to the hostess hostess uh, company that went under. My favorite is the uh, <laughs> the cupcake. But anyway, okay. Now I'm assuming that yeah my cat's trying to get on me I'm assuming that you know how to make the slip knot all right you make the tail I set it on top like an anchor okay but it will flop around as you're doing this I have the red heart yarn I have four strands in total I have the two balls sitting over here um, I have the contrast color and a white, and then over here I have a contrast color and the white. And those two balls are sitting on this side, on the floor, and, and everything. Now, I'm using the boy uh, loom. I like these because you can take these pegs out, and they will open up to be long ways and longer to make... Um, little blankets or longer scarves or whatnot so today we're gonna keep them connected together and uh, let's get started now you go in the middle here now I'm sorry since it's looking this way you're looking as if you're sitting across from me um, basically what we need to do is braid these two strands in the middle okay so we I'm going to use the peach or orange as it looks to you as the, the base one to always follow. So we take this one, put it over. I let go of it by accident. Okay, and you do that twice. You see how back here it's getting all twisted and discombobulated? <laughs> um, if you follow it completely, it, it does straighten out, but you will have to fix the yarn later on. Now, this part sounds and, and looks harder than it is, but you're sliding the yarns in between the next peg. Just like that. I hope you can see it right. Okay. Now, if it's one color is off to the other side, which I can see it on my end, but you can't like the orange is too far. Just pull on on one of the colors and it straightens it out. Okay, it will get messed up as you're going. Just pull on it. Now the the beginning one, the orange was on top. Now the orange is gonna go underneath. One, two. Bring them up and put them there. Let's move this one so you can see. Put it down there. Get it down. Okay. Put it back in. Now, on my view, I could see it. Um, it doesn't really matter too much of this first one. I always start watching from here on um, to tell which like if you lose your place okay is the, is the orange on top or is it get flipped over on the bottom you uh, it's after a while it's pretty easy to tell which one it is by looking right here okay so this one I'll show you what I mean let's try the orange on top da -da 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 -da. up okay so you see how this one is uh, slanted one way and then this one slanted another way when it's slanted like this towards the back see I'm looking at it differently than you are I hope <laughs> I'm new to this so I'm sorry when it looks this way you can always tell that the orange was this way okay 
and then when you go, if you can't tell by that side, go to the other color. Alright, now you can see what color is on top and what color was on bottom. All right, I'm only going to do a couple here. I like to work with it on my lap and it's pushing like like I said Indian style on the bed and this side is pushing onto the bed and this side is pushing against me so it's you know kind of like trapped there now I can see that the blue is on top here so and that means the orange was on the bottom so the orange is going to be Top. Maybe I should have done this on a longer loom. Hmm. But you'll get the idea. It seems harder than it is. It's just getting your fingers in there. Okay. One. Two. Bing, bang, boom. Okay. And then we go this way. And occasionally I like to pull these so they don't get too tangled. Uh, the orange was on top, so now the orange is going to go on the bottom. Oops. Get back down. Okay. So this is the last one I'm going to do this way. Then we're going to go starting back the other way. Okay. My fingers are too fat. Come on, come on. It's cooperating. I swear it's easier than it looks. <laughs> I'm also working on a little table. Okay. Now, this is the first way. I always call this where the loop is the beginning. Okay? It's the front, it's the back. Back, front, up, 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 up. What you need to do, you're going to have to flip it now, okay? This is the only time that you're going to be putting double rows on your last pegs. It's um, an anchor, I guess you would call it. Push this down. I'm trying to think of the words of what I mean by it. Maybe it's, mm, I'm having what I like to call a brain fart. So since we're going back, all right, I find the first one to do, keep your loom the same way. fingers in a minute. This is where it starts to get tangled. Take it, flip it. <laughs> Sounds like that song. <laughs> um, Alright, so now we're working our way this way. Now the first one has the two. It's going to be the anchor. Alright, and let me do this up real quick. Now the orange is on this side and the blue is on this side so just remember if you want to still use the orange as the, as the focus point of top or bottom with the braiding and it's on the other side all right so go this way I'm gonna do these up real quick to show you what I mean was on top. Stop moving. Alright. Yeah, I should have used the longer loom. Oh well. Dun 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 d
Da -da -da -da. Anybody happy that Christmas is right around the corner? <laughs> I know, I said the evil words. Okay. My dog is looking at me like, what? What? He just wants a treat. Cat snuggled up in a ball. Alright, so this last one is a little crooked, so we're going to pull this side. Oh, it keeps moving. I'm so sorry. Alright, look this way. Okay, now, I put them here. I'll move it forward so you can see. And we're coming around. Alright, what I like to do, I just hold it in place. Just hold them in place. Now the last one I did, it went through here. It's coming around, point. And then the same, this one, it's coming, I'll go backwards, point. This is the, the holder peg. We don't use that one. Since this is where we ended in the front, remember, and this is the back, under a little bit and then I'll show you. Pull this up. They sometimes the first ones are hard, sometimes they're loose. It's alright as long as you don't miss any loops and whatnot. If you want it tighter you just go back and do it again. Okay, now we did the first one in the front this one's locked in place. Hold it right there. We'll flip it. It doesn't matter how you hold the loom. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I use all different sorts. You know, like, I'll hold it against me. I'll hold it on my lap. I'll hold it sideways. I'll hold it this way. And flip it this way and this way. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Now these two are locked in place. Let me just do these real quick. Bada boom. Bada boom. Push them down as I'm going. Go to this side. Okay. Over. Push up. And this is basically, it's, it's like the E wrap. It's a knit E wrap. And boom. Okay. And then push down. Now, the thing with the boy needle uh, looms compared to the nifty knitters, I don't know if you can see it, they have grooves. So the yarn will get caught in there. That's the only downside about these looms. But after a while, once you get the hang of it, you just go in and pull it down. And boop, pop them down. Or, like I said, once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to go in the middle. Just learn how to finagle them to get down. I know I have weird terms. Okay. So, the front, where's our tail? Okay, it's right here. So this is the front. That's where we ended last. This is the back. Now, we're going to skip these two pegs. Now, I'll tell you why. After you go all the way around, okay, and you wrap around these last two pegs, and you knit, knit them over, blip, 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 blip. basically the one that you skipped is going to be um, like your border on your scarf. It, it makes a, a nice border, and it's not funky. You can, this scarf that I did right here, that I showed the picture of, I 
actually wrapped around these two top pegs. Okay, not that's the holder. Once you get about four or five rows, you could take that off and just slide it in to the bottom. But this is what happens when you do wrap around those two pegs. Okay, it's your choice. Okay. Now I'm gonna do it without it on this tutorial. Alright. Oh, it started for me. Huh. So the orange is over. One, two. Skip those first two. Once you find a comfortable position, it whips up fast. I even tried using my cross stitch holder, you know, with the, the wing nuts and holding it in place. It worked. You know, I took out some of these pegs and was holding it there, but I had to keep taking it off and switching it around, to, you know, to go back and forth. And I was like, oh, forget it, I'll just hold it. <laughs> so. Straight. What did I do? No. It's this way. I'm not paying attention. Fingers are in the way. Straight. All right. Orange was top, so the orange is going to be bottom. Sort of like this. Alright, now when we're coming all the way back, you will see. Uh, I'm sorry, you, you won't see. Oh, I'm getting nervous. You're wrapping around these last two pegs. We're not braiding though, but we're holding. Get these two. We started here. So we go bump, 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 bump. Now these two are only wrapped around it. Okay. And then you're going to just count one. Go over that one. I'm holding them tight so I don't lose them. And you go over that one so that halfway locked in place. Okay. Now when you get through the can you see that? When you get through them go. Okay, it's like uh oh, we only have the one. That's okay. So you just do those, do them on this side, that's locked in place. Okay. And then we, this is how I push the down. Push, um, kind of like an inward. We're rolling them. If they, if they're too tight, want to go. Okay, so pull that tight. If you want to keep it in place, you can always... Yeah, not like that. <laughs> Sorry, that was embarrassing. Been around a few times. You can even die peg if you want. Um, see how the tail is through? Okay, that will always tell you where you're beginning. That's hard to see because of it's just two rows going to have an effect 
in the beginning, chain on this one, like this. Okay, tail. And you have little hollow loops. You can take and we in crochet with the, the fabric needle or you can leave them on and just make tassels. Okay. That's basically the two colors, double sided. One more look here. Okay. Now the way that I close the door, I'm still on it, like I said, I'm professional, I do this for fun. When you are done, okay, you can have two closings, or cast off. With a clean needle, you take white, take it off, and you come here and take this off. I don't have a crochet needle on it, but I'll use this as a crochet needle. Okay. You take the one side off, over. So you have two on, on the hook. Right? This is the first one you took off. So you take. Come. And step through. Okay. And you get a crack. Basically, it's like a zip. Start here, to that one, then that one, then that one. And you just keep put that on the hook. That's the one we just put on. Take one. So then on this let's pretend this is the loop. Okay. Through the loop. So Okay. Alright. 